Behold a faithful and prudent steward, whom the Lord set over his household. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your Church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of the human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, When your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The Word of the Lord. The Son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. He shall say of me, You are my father my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made known to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world but through the righteousness that comes from faith. 
For this reason it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, Thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They shall never cease to praise you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention. When, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a painting by Tizzo of St. Joseph. It's called The Anxiety of St. Joseph. And it shows him leaning over his workbench, kind of just twiddling a knife in his hand, and he's doing that, you know, thousand-yard stare, as it were. And I imagine this painting took place shortly after Joseph found out Mary was pregnant, or after he had the dream that we just spoke about, where essentially he was told, you will be the foster father of the Messiah. In each of these cases, there had to be anxiety and nervousness. And that doesn't mean he didn't trust in God, quite the contrary. But it is the human condition. Uncertainty leads to anxiety at times. And that's where faith comes in. You know, in this picture of St. Joseph, you think about it, he was marrying the greatest woman in the village. And they had hopes and dreams like everyone else. You know, the house on the hill, and the dog, and the fence, and the whole nine yards. So imagine that the best woman in the village tells you she's pregnant. And even if she tells you herself it is by the power of the Holy Spirit, that doesn't make any sense. Even to a faith-filled people, I mean, Mary couldn't have even told her parents, really. But who can St. Joseph tell? Because in an honor-shame society, if he stays with her, he will be shamed. And that means he loses his business, he loses his livelihood, he loses his reputation. The only responsible reaction to being shamed is to leave town. And so it, it was very convenient, if not providential, that there was a census taking place, which allowed for them to leave town in a hurry to get counted. St. Joseph is also the patron of a happy death. 
You know, we think about the first reading there where David is, is essentially getting his happy death. He's being told his last message essentially from God and everything that will come from that. Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and your throne shall stand firm forever. Knowing that, despite everything that David went through, we can imagine that he had a happy death. And with St. Joseph, despite all the anxiety, despite all the things that he had to deal with early on, even the Holy Family, that it was the absolute best that God wanted for them. In this time of uncertainty, we ask the intercession of St. Joseph, that we might have faith as he had when faced with difficult choices, faced with the unknown. And we also pray through his intercession for those who have died, the patron of a happy death, that they may be eternally with God in peace. I really never had a devotion to St. Joseph when I was younger because my brother, my older brother's name is Joseph, and growing up he was a royal terror to us all. Thankfully, as he's gotten older now, he's just a regular terror. No, he has gotten significantly better. But in any case, we ask the intercession of St. Joseph that we may be trusting, we may be put our faith in God and that our anxiety may actually be a springboard to which we put faith in something beyond our own resources, the things that we can obtain for ourselves, perhaps for the first time. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. We pray for Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who hold public office, especially in this time of crisis, that the Lord may inspire them, and they may be open to the wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered at our homes, unable to attend the Mass, unable to go in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, that it will create within us an authentic hunger for God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick, in mind, body, and spirit, especially those who struggle alone, and those with this current virus, that the Lord may grant us healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you these prayers, those spoken and those within the silence of our hearts. Grant what we need according to your holy will, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care, your only begotten Son, born of a Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and on the solemnity of Saint Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wide and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who is conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise, as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uncelia terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. 
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all of your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tuum, annunciamus domine, et tuum resurrectionem confitemo, done venias. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Agnus Christi, Fili Dei, Vili Pris, Fronta, Pe Patris, in Corrande, Spirito Santo, Opin Tomo, Mune, Rebe, Caste, Rebe, Lei, Pre, Hoc, Chacon, Hoc, Chacon, Chacon, Tomo, Amigitate, Vos, 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 Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Christi, Christ Amen.
Well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share in your master's joy. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray. The family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep safe your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.